Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I have a wonderful guest speaker today. Her name is Christina Ashe. Uh, Christina works with me with affordable real estate investments in different capacities. And uh, we both thought that this was an important discussion we wanted to have with you before we jumped on a call. It's something that we keep seeing, especially in different communities, especially in the Black community. It is very important. And sometimes it makes me very sad because it doesn't have to be that way. Um, but the reason we're doing it is because we can turn all of that upside down if we just learn to embrace and accept what money can be. So this discussion is money. Is it your friend, your lover, or your foe? And this is very serious. A lot of us in the Black community who are now online come from working class, lower income neighborhoods and background. So we had to do a lot of stuff to get out of that position. Some of you guys are way past that and some of you guys are still sort of in that survival mode. And we need to talk about that and your money mindset and why that matters. Christina woke up, um, just moved and led to have this discussion. Uh, so it is worth your time and it's worth my time to have. So Christina, uh, let us know what you were moved to, to talk about. You know, you know my audience, you know our community, you know your own experiences. What is going on with money mindset that you see? Um, if you can articulate that. Well, you know, um we're talking specifically about people in the community, but really it is about anyone who's in a position of wanting to elevate your lifestyle, change your lifestyle. Um, we think that, you know, real estate investing is just about money mm -mm. and it's not. Mm -hmm. Whenever we are wanting to change our life, it takes more than just money. It becomes something about your mindset you know, and what your relationship is to money. Um, so we, we talked about, is it your friend, your lover, or your foe? What messages have you received about money? I mean, I remember growing up, Lisa, and um, my mother would say, money doesn't grow on trees. Yes, I've heard and that. And in my mind, I was thinking, yeah, it does, I can see it. <laughs> but, um, you know, what, what messages did you get? Oh, um, you know, uh, this is good enough. Right. You don't need more than this. Right. Uh, uh, why? You don't need a degree or education to be okay. You just need to pay the bills, right. go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't necessarily negative. It was limiting. Right. And so what I'm saying is that a lot of the ideas came out of a belief in lack. You know, yeah. um, go get a good job. You know, that way you'll have insurance. And although that is true, it, it sets a mindset, it sets a belief about what's possible, about mm -hmm. what kinds of things we can actually create. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was another reason that it came to mind because as I go through um, talking to our clients, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times I'm hearing those beliefs come out those fears come out right and so you know a friend of mine said you know you never uh he was talking about of course las vegas but you never gamble with uh scared money and so what right. i want to say is that you can't grow scared money i know you know everything um, takes investment exactly exactly i mean i don't care if it's time or i don't care if it's you know everyone i'm working with today usually white collar professionals right. invested in their college education right they invested in a degree they invested in a skill so yeah it's not entrepreneurial but it's the same exact basis you invest right. it to get a certain return and outcome you didn't go i'm not going to go to school to do and, and you could have definitely right? right but when you went forward with that mindset of like I want to get something and you, you know, for the most part, you get it out, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I just would like to lay that foundation. Like when your hands are closed and your fist is like this, exactly. it's like you're in church. You're exactly. going to give back what you give out. Right. Exactly. And when you come from fear or, and I can't invest in myself because this is all I have, we don't want you to stay there. Right. I don't want you to stay in. This is all I have. I don't give, I don't put out to get anything back. 
Right. You know what I mean? And now I'm super into investments, not just my real estate, right. my own education. You can't stop me because I've gotten such high return right. on the investments, you know, but it, it is, it does, it is sort of sad sometimes when I see people in survival mode and everyone I work with now who's at that next level know that they've had to give up that mindset and go, well, where am I going to put, well, I got to get better. Where do I put my money to, so I can grow and be that bigger image. I don't even care if it's going to LPN school, whatever it might be. Well, you know, the, I think the biggest thing and probably the most challenging thing about moving in the direction of beginning to invest is changing your mindset. It's changing what you believe because I think about the movie, The Secret. And it talked about affirming the positive, thinking positive, and mm -hmm. incorporating new practices into your day. But the one thing it didn't talk about was that you don't manifest what you want. You manifest what you believe. Yes. And so it becomes very important that we know what it is that we're believing. If, if you've had some successes and they've been short-lived, or if you have some things in your story that have been hardships, then it becomes more important to really know what it is that you believe as you plan on growing your money, as you plan on changing your lifestyle. It's important to know what it is that you're believing. And an example. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, an example of that. <laughs> as soon as you said it, I was like, yes. You can say, I want to be rich. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. But at the end of the day, if in the back of your mind was like, man, if I give this money to somebody, I'm going to fail. Or I'm not going to get my money back. Or they're going to take it. I'm going to be swindled. You can say you want to be rich all day. But if you really believe that if you put anything out and invest in anything, you're not going to get anything back. It doesn't right. matter what you want. You're just going to be another dreamer. Right. Versus the other people right next to you, same neighborhood, same job even. Right? Because you can look at any job you're on and look at different people. And they might be so much further ahead of you, mm -hmm. but they didn't have that lack, scared, fear mentality. And I'm not saying, I mean, we understand where the fear comes from, but we also understand a little courage too can go a long way. Well, you know, the thing about fear is that we're going to have it. Anytime you do yeah. something new, it's going to be there, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a choice that we can make. You know, we can do it afraid. We can get the skills that we need. We can make the investments in educating ourselves and closing that gap so that we're clear on what we're doing. Because it's not about us trusting something outside of ourselves. It's about us beginning to trust ourselves. Yes. That if I get what is necessary yes. in terms of know-how, then I can trust myself. I can trust myself to know when something is feeling good and when it's as it should be. And I can trust myself to say, no, this doesn't seem like a good deal for me. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that becomes very important. Okay. Yeah. I agree as well. Um, uh, so, you know, do you want to talk a little bit more about friend, lover, or foe? Because I really like that. Yeah. And I have to say, um, my mindset from a little girl, and I was a little different than everyone in my family. Mm -hmm. okay? I was like, we got to get more. I didn't have the belief that I couldn't. I was like, no, I can. I gotta right. work hard. Right. So from a young age, I was like, okay, if I work hard, I can get it. Right. It didn't come from a place of, oh, I'm not gonna there was hope. Right. right? So I was more naturally attuned and I kept and I'm not optimistic by nature, and mm -hmm. some people aren't. So I was more naturally right. attuned to keep hoping. Right. And so guess what? You know, at the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, if I do this, I can. If I do this, I can. Right. If I do this, I can. So there was, like, trust that I can do that. So when right. you say foe, there's some people who do have a negative connotation. Oh, you know, you hear all day, oh, look at those rich people. You ever met a rich multimillionaire? Like, yeah, like, what? Right. Money doesn't make you evil. You evil or you're not. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about it is, is that even the idea that I have to work hard. Because sometimes... Yeah. You don't have to work hard. Sometimes you just have to learn and you have to listen and follow your instinct, your intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, and, and because we sometimes believe that we have to work hard, then if we don't have to work hard, then we're not open to accepting it. Sometimes. So that can be like a catch 22. Yes. The other thing 
yes. is, um, you know, when I grew up, money was my friend. You know, I knew that if I called on it, it came, you know, and it wasn't until I got into my, probably my mid twenties after I had had some life experiences and my ideas about money um, began to change. I began to get scared, afraid of money. You know, if I had um, a bill collector calling me, I, I was afraid because I didn't know how I was going to make that. You know, so some of the things that we do when we're afraid is we begin to hide. We begin to hide from making decisions. We begin to hide yes. from looking at what the situation actually is. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, our money doesn't grow. You talked about hanging on to money. And I like to compare it to um, a water hose. You know, if, you're, if your water is on in your house and you hook the hose up to the spigot, then you're going to get water out. We know that. But if you have the belief that at any moment, this water is going to be cut off, then you're going to try and save it. You know, you might squeeze the holes a little bit so it only comes out slowly. Mm -hmm. Right. You might put it in some pails or some buckets or something so that you can save it. But what ends up happening is that your results, what you're getting, the, the quality of the water that you're getting, the amount that you're getting is usually not enough. Anything that you put in a bucket, well, it's going to get contaminated. The still water is not going to be enough. It's not going to be what you need. And so when we talk about money, we're talking about energy, really. We are talking about energy that's not positive or negative. We're just talking about a flow. And so when we are trying to hold on tight to it, it leaves us. Right. <laughs> it leaves us because right. our belief is in the lack. Our yeah. belief is in it's not enough. Our right. belief is that I'm afraid of it. It's not my friend. It is my foe. And that is what I'm learning. Uh, you know, Lisa, because I can be scared too. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't stopped coming yet. Right? Yeah. Right? So we can trust that we can attract it. And, you know, you don't even have to be spiritual to go. It's good to develop a positive mindset about money. Right. Like you don't have to go, well, I don't know if you're getting too spiritual for me. It doesn't even have to be about that. Right. Either have a good mindset about it or not, even without the spirituality portion, that right. is not going to hurt you. Right. right? And, and I wanted to ask you, as you're talking to people, mm -hmm. what are some of the things you're seeing and some of the things that you wish were released or let right. go? Because you're having a lot of conversations now with a lot of people in our group who want to grow, but they're scared and we get it. We come from a history where we didn't have much, right? right? We're first generation with anything, mm -hmm. first generation with our own house, maybe. Right. Whereas there's other races in this country where they're fifth generation and they've gotten inheritances, right? right? Which is fine. I want to throw that all away because I want uh, that to be us. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to talk about what you have been seeing uh, mindset wise and, mm -hmm. and what you wish or what you wish they would treat. And, right. you know, it does hurt, you know, when, you, when you're like, oh, we need you to... To break free a little bit. Well, you know, um, when I've talked to people, and not even just talking to them, when I'm looking at the information as I prepare to do a consultation with someone, I'm seeing how they're answering questions. Yeah. And, you know, the belief in lack is obvious there. And we all, we all come to a point where we decide we want something more and we're willing to change. So it's not a judgment at all, but it is a recognition that, you know, when you say that you want help and then you don't want to talk, you don't want to give your phone number um, or you don't want to give your email address or, or you find reasons and ways to kind of back out of what you've said you wanted. Right. You know, I call that self-sabotage. Right. Because it's like, if you want Lisa's help, there was something about hearing her speak, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was down to earth, her integrity, um, you just liked her beautiful face, whatever it was, 
that, excuse me, that got your attention when you heard her speak. Trust that. You know, that was something for you. But when she or I reach out to call you to, to see what it is we can do for you, and we come up with all kinds of reasons that, you know, I don't want to do this. Um, just in terms of not even be, being able to connect, then what that tells me is that the fear is greater than the desire. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when everything needs to be free, again, that's that lack mentality that's hanging. And where on. do you go when your fear is greater than desire? Then, I mean, it's just obvious the fear won. Yeah. I mean, when the fear is greater than the desire, when it's greater than your willingness to move forward, then you stay still. You stay exactly where you are. There is no change. And it goes like that until you finally get tired of being where you are. I mean, because no one can, um, can make you open your mind and open your heart to what it is you desire. And so, you know, one of the reasons that I really wanted to do this is because I could see myself. I could see my past self as I'm going through and as I'm, I'm even talking to people, you know, I'm, I'm um, asking, well, you know, what is it that you, what is your vision? Right. What do you want to see yourself? Exactly. Right? Cause that's exactly. my question. It's all about you. Right. Right. And so if you don't know what your vision is, that's okay. But then you need to start doing that work to figure out what it is that you have in your mind's eye. You know, because if you don't have something that you're working towards, right. then again, you're kind of standing still right. because you're all over the place. You know, the one thing that you want to do as you move into investing, as you move into making any choices that are going to expand your life is to say, okay, well, what is my vision? You know, not for my children, not for my mate, not for my parents. Not because they told me I couldn't, but what is your vision that's in your heart? What is it that you want to accomplish? And once you know that, you have to honestly look at where you are. Okay, so where am I? What is, and, and sometimes we don't know the answer to that question. Sometimes we think we're someplace we're not. Mm -hmm. So what, what's going on in my life? Because your life will tell you where you are, you know, What's going on in my household? What's going on with my health? What's going on in my relationships and my relationship with my work that I'm doing now? Does it reflect who you are, who you truly are? Right. And if it doesn't, then what that says to me is that there have been choices and decisions made that you didn't make in your own best interest. Mm-hmm. And so as we improve, expand our lives, then that means that we also have to start making choices that are in our best interest. Right. And so when we talk about education around real estate and what it is that you need to do, of course, there's an investment that you have to make, not only with your, your money, but your time, mm -hmm. your effort. Your you vision. Know, your do vision. you want this to happen? Exactly. You do. I know you do. Exactly. And you wouldn't reach out if you didn't. Exactly. And we, everyone wants you to succeed. Exactly. I mean, despite what you hear, everybody wants people in our community especially to succeed. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to see it. We're such a powerful group of people, and you mm -hmm. see it. Everyone sees it. Well, see, the, the other thing for me and what I think attracted me most to you, Lisa, the first time I heard you speak was because I realized that this is a generational impact. You mm -hmm. know, not only um, the actual part about investing in real estate, but it is the changes that we go through as we begin to change our lives. Those things our children and everyone around us mm -hmm. are witness to. You know, I we, every day I hear, exactly. oh, I just saw a Facebook post. I'm just going to have a group of moms like me and my mean and me and teach her how to invest in stocks and real estate. Yeah. Does anybody want to come? There were like 10 moms who were like, I do. Yeah. I never saw that before. Yeah. I mean, but 
as we expand, we give permission almost to those people who are around us to say, wow, you know, if she can do it, if he can do it, then that means I can do it too. You know, so it is a generational impact. It's right. a powerful impact. It's leadership. You didn't do it. You didn't say I'm a leader. You didn't go, I'm going to be a leader of this movement. Right. But to me, leadership is just doing it, doing it well, and letting other people know that that's a reality for them as well. Right. So everyone's a little bit of a leader. It doesn't have to be a designated position. Exactly. You just want to go forward and show others that they can do the same thing. Exactly. It's good to and even when there is fear, because I, what I see a lot is, why haven't you moved forward with real estate investing? Oh, a little fear. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay to do it afraid. Yeah, yeah. Again, get the information and the support that you need. Um, I think one of the things that um, we offer that is absolutely wonderful is the opportunity to expand your network. Oh, yeah. You know, the opportunity to really work in a group Uh, In some cases where you feel the momentum and you get the momentum of the group, you know, you can't beat a group of like-minded people. Yeah. And sometimes you're an island on your own. I just had a two day retreat. Mm -hmm. We were all so happy to be together because we're an island on our own. Exactly. No one around. People look at you funny. Like what are you going to a retreat? You know, like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like people around them was just like, and they were so happy. They came so happy. Right. Because you need that momentum of others. Oh, definitely. we're not we're not made to do this by ourselves. Definitely, and and in actuality, that momentum, that combined and focused energy—that's that word again—but that combined and focused energy and effort cause you to propel. It causes you to grow faster. And <laughs> no, no, I've done it before. Yeah, right. Like you do something, but then when you you know, then I went to a competition. And all of a sudden, there are hundreds doing this. Exactly. And I got so much better in that three-day competition. Exactly. I mean, everyone has this experience. You got so much better in those three days being around others doing the same thing. Right. That it would have taken you years to get. Right. Um, I didn't think of it at the time as an energetic thing, but that actually makes more sense because how do you grow and transform so much in three days exactly. if it's not? Exactly. Um, And so, you know, I wrote down some notes, so I'm peeking at my notes, but um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, dead ground and fertile ground. When we talk about um, how do we do things that bring us closer to our vision, to our goal, one of the things you want to ask yourself whenever you're making a decision to do something, or especially if you're putting your time or your money into something is, is this dead ground or fertile ground? Dead ground will not reap any results. So I can go and spend money. Um, I can go and get uh, McDonald's and I don't eat McDonald's, but I could go and do that. That's dead ground because not only is it going to cost you in your health, <laughs> but it's not going to give you anything. It's not going to add to you. Um, Okay. I can take that same five, ten dollars, whatever it is that you're spending, and I can go and buy a book. I can go and buy a book that is going to tell me how to do something that yeah. I want to do. Right. I can spend five dollars and I can get on um, Facebook or some social media, and maybe there's a webinar that's going to give me some information that I need, and it's actually going to be able to feed me and feed my family because now I have this information. Yeah. So are you planning your, your seeds, your money and your time? Are you planning on dead ground or are you planning on fertile ground? And so what I'm saying is that um, this is fertile ground. You know, this is an opportunity to get the information that you need mm-hmm. um, to begin to move in the direction, saying to the, to the universe, saying to whomever that, Not only do I believe that this is possible, but now I'm willing to invest my time, my effort, my money into moving towards this. And guess what happens? Like in The Secret, they said that when you do that, things begin to come to you. People begin to come to you Mm -hmm. to support you in your vision. 
You attract it. Uh, is there anything else? So we're coming to the end. We mm -hmm. just wanted to make sure people hear these words, really hear them. Yeah. Uh, we were moved to do this for a reason. We're talking to people and we see the difference between those advancing and those who are scared and not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just can't afford to not advance. Right. You, like, we just can't. It's yeah. not getting easier. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. This world is not getting easier. You can't. And we don't say this lightly. We don't say it without just saying we really feel an urgency that I know you're scared, but like things are just getting tighter. Wages are just getting more stagnant. Yeah. Cost of living is going up. Houses are getting more expensive. You need to be a part of this movement. Mm -hmm. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. And, and it's time to do something new. Have to. Do something in a different way. And the time I think is over for trying to do everything by yourself, thinking that you have to know it all, do it all, and be it all. No, no, not I at all. think that uh, pulling on the collective uh, wisdom, the collective experience, the collective knowledge is a winning ticket. You know, it really will take you further than trying to get all of the, everything, all of the information yourself. Right. So yeah, I love that message. I just hope that resonates with everyone. Um, the time is now. It's not, if you don't work now, it's going to be 18 times harder 10 years from now. Yeah. Things aren't stopping. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not stopping. And I know you're scared. We all were at one point. It's, I'm not, that's okay. Well, you can't just shake that off. We get it, yeah. you know, but you got to move forward with us. Yeah. Um, everyone does because uh, it's just going to be a different world nowadays. Yeah, it, it already is. It, I think it's very clear that it's here. Yeah. So I think when I say this, you'll, you'll read between the lines, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's what I wanted to say. So that was really heartfelt for me and Christina, what we just did today. Um, yeah. We said it because we care. Is everyone going to see this? No. That there's certain people I would like to see this. Mm -hmm. um, Christina's probably reached out to you. You said that you'd talk to her, uh, but we're seeing the same patterns repeat itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a beautiful person who can change this mindset right. with money. And it's okay to change it to a more positive relationship. We want desire, not fear to win. Mm -hmm. Your desire. All right. You have Any last words, Christina? Uh, just remember. This is about you. Your decisions yeah. impact every step of your life. So it's really about you. And we want to support you and assist you in that. All right. Thank you so much. So this was uh, Money, Your Friend, Lover, or Foe. Uh, in the mindset around it, just things that we've been seeing, things that we know can help you go forward. I hope you really listen to it with like the full sincerity that Christina and I brought to you today. All right. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Hope to talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Let me pause it.